Welcome to part one of our series on using Isotope RX in the context of voice production. More specifically, I will be showing how I use RX when editing audiobooks. So this is not so much about using RX in isolation, but more about how I integrate it within a particular workflow. However, you might find this tutorial useful in different contexts, whether it's dialogue for film, podcast or radio production. I will place a particular emphasis on the time-saving and practical aspects of using RX and the different options it provides to deal with common problems like background noises, etc. Keep an eye out for the instructions for the chance to win a copy of Isotope RX plugin bundle. There's also a grand prize of RX to be won. Something quite specific in audiobooks editing is that you need access to the text along with the audio. Uh, for that purpose, I usually allocate half the screen to my door, Cocos Reaper in this case, and the other half of the screen to the text document. Then I edit as the audio plays back and scroll the text document at the same time. I could use two screens, but I prefer using just one screen as I can jump between the two programs quicker. And also this layout is better for editing on the move if you're using a laptop, for example. As you can see, the producer marks the script so that you know which takes to keep and which ones to delete. Uh, as an editor, you need to follow the producer's instructions and also to set the correct pace for the story to flow. Chapter 31. The General Orders. Demo the General Orders. Chapter 31. The General Orders. Democracy. The emperor was seldom seen by the people and rarely set foot outside his royal palace. He had declared palace. He had declared himself human at the beginning of 1946, but on the morning of Sunday the 3rd of November, a vast crowd thronged the streets of Tokyo to catch a glimpse of the former living god, descendant of the sun deity Amaterasu Omikami. Another important task when editing is to clear the recording of any intrusive sounds and noises and apply dynamic processing and to master the audio ready for release. Uh, this is where Isotope's RX5 really helps. So let's have a quick overview of my FX chain and the way I use RX in my workflow. Uh, there are two main ways I use RX, uh, as an external editor and as VST plugin inside Ripa. I find using uh, RX as a VST quicker, so I always try this approach first. In Reaper, I have four tracks. Uh, one track is for the voice recording, let's call it the main text. Uh, two tracks are for specific FX processing. And one track is a subgroup bus or parent track. As the three audio tracks are routed to the subgroup bus, uh, any effects on this bus will be applied to the rest of the tracks. On the bus track, you can see the usual effects plugins. Some plugins are always activated and others are saved on the template, but only activated if there is any need for them. This is the case of some of um, RX modules like the hum and dialogue denoise, which I would use if there was a ground loop or hiss present on, the, on all the recordings. The one RX plugin on this track that I always have activated is Insight and more specifically the level and loudness meters. I haven't got any effects on the main text track as I am using the bus track to process the audio. Now on the first processing track I have the D-click module on its own and I can say uh, that so far this is the single most useful part of RX for me. It's like magic really, but I'll get into details and explain more about it later. Finally, on the second processing track, I usually load all the available RX modules so that I can quickly activate and process parts of the audio if and when needed. Uh, later on on this tutorial, I will explain why and how I use these um, RX processing modules and get into the relevant parameters. Uh, but first, I'm going to go back to Insight and explore some of its useful features. Perhaps one of the first things to do uh, is to set up some sort of level metering so that we have an idea of the peaks and the average level of the recorded audio. Once we have this information, we can make decisions about applying dynamic processing to achieve the required broadcast levels. 
Insight includes a set of audio analysis tools and comes as an add-on with Isotope's RX5 Advance, though I think you can also buy it separately. It provides very detailed information of the frequency domain, the loudness levels and the stereo field. There are loads of options under the hood to adjust the way you can present this information. Um, you can actually drag the windows to change their size or minimize or maximize each one of them. So I'm just going to show the level and loudness meters. So here we have an instance of Insight inserted as the last plugin on my FX chain. Let's have a closer look at the level and loudness meters. On the left, we have the level meters showing all 5.1 surround channels, although we only have audio on the left and right channels at the moment. These meters can be set to show true peak and RMS levels on a full scale or to show those levels on a special scale known as the K system. The true peak mode is recommended when you want to identify any possible clipping, whereas the K system will probably give you a better visual feedback to achieve the desired uh, RMS levels. There are three different K system meter scales, each allowing for a different amount of headroom. Uh, I would usually choose the K12 scale, which is widely used in broadcast, uh, where 0 dB is set to minus 12 dB full scale, so that leaves 12 dB of headroom. As an editor, my aim then is to adjust the makeup gain uh, of my limiter or compressor so that uh, the RMS levels are around 0 dB on the K12 scale. You also have the option to show or hide the peak hold. MacArthur had ordered the Japanese to come up with a new modern democratic and to set a custom peak target level. So, for example, if you set the target value to minus 3 dB, any signal that goes above this value will be shown as clipping. There's another newer way of measuring your volume levels, and this is with the loudness meters. In fact, the loudness meters uh, should be used to make sure your audio complies with uh, the standards required by broadcasting organizations such as the ATSC and the EBU. It is also likely this approach will be spreading uh, to other areas like the film and the music industries. The unit of measurement is the loudness units relative to full scale or LUFS, L-U-F-S which, as its name suggests, calculates the perceived loudness of the audio. I'm not going to get deep into the technical aspects of it, but it's worth mentioning some of the information that Insight uh, shows on its interface. There are three different ways of calculating loudness values depending on how long the window of measurement is. So, for example, the momentary meter uses a very short window, about half a second long, to calculate the perceived loudness. Then we have the short term measurement over 3 seconds. And finally, we have the integrated value, which calculates the overall average over an indefinite period of time. This is the most important value to look for. And when we talk about loudness target levels, we usually refer to the integrated value. Another useful parameter is the loudness range measured in loudness units, where one loudness unit equals 1 dB. Uh, this calculates the dynamic range over an indefinite period of time. We can set the loudness target values we wish to achieve. So if I increase or decrease the target value, you can see the white line moving up or down. And any levels above this uh, value will show in red. I can also change the scale to relative so that 0 dB represents my chosen target value. They would be like a boy of 12 as compared with our 45. They were susceptible to following new models, new ideas. They were still close enough to their origin to be elastic. There's another useful way to keep track of your loudness levels in relation to the target values. And this is the loudness overflow automation feature. I haven't personally used this in any of my audiobook projects, but um, I think it's worth exploring. To set this up, first you need to take the Enable Sending Automation data box in Insight and then activate it inside Reaper. Basically, any levels exceeding your target values will be shown on the automation lane as positive values. 
and any audio that complies with your target levels as negative values. This is actually great to locate in a very precise way uh, any problematic audio in the timeline. No criticism of the regime was permitted. The much-feared thought police, the Tokubetsu Kotu Keisatsu, they predated Orwell, although they actually were called the thought department of the police. However, if you don't need to pinpoint the loudness levels uh, in such detail, there is an easier way of tracking the loudness trend over time, uh, with the loudness history graph. I haven't used this tool yet, as most speech recordings I work with are quite consistent. Uh, but there might be cases where the reader increases or decreases in level due to having recorded in different studios, for example, or sitting away from the microphone, or when there is more than one voice. So the history graph could be useful in those cases. They predated Orwell, although they actually were called the thought department. There are three small buttons to control the level measurements in different ways. Uh, one to pause, another to reset the measurement, but the one I would use more often uh, would be the continuous calculation, which holds loudness values uh, when playback is stopped, something that happens quite a lot when editing audio. A freedom of speech directive from SCAP declared at the beginning of the occupation, a freedom of speech directive from SCAP banned. At the beginning of the occupation, a freedom of speech directive from SCAP declared... Next to the options menu, we have the presets menu. The presets are organized in three main categories, audio analysis, loudness metering, and music production. The loudness metering one includes presets that are compliant for broadcast in Japan, Europe, and the US, and a couple for video game consoles. Notice the detailed descriptions at the bottom of the plugin. This same set of plugins are also included for the SMPTE and the DTS channel configurations. What is important here is to choose the right preset for your project. I have also created my own preset folder and have some useful presets for iTunes, Replay Gain and YouTube. So once Insight has been set up, I want to place it somewhere out of the way, making the window as small as possible so I can have um, more room to see the audio and the text. Given the space restrictions, I have to choose between uh, the loudness and the RMS meters. I'm going to choose the integrated loudness number displays. In Ripper, you can show a small part of any VST plugin. The problem is that this window arrangement is not kept after closing the plugin or after closing the project, so it has to be resized every time. Not sure how this issue could be resolved. But in any case, it would be nice if Isotope's uh, Insight meters offered the option of a minimal interface, uh, perhaps in the form of a, a small VU independent from the main interface uh, that wouldn't need to be resized. Thanks for watching. Next time, we will look at how to use RX5's loudness module and Insight's loudness history graph and the loudness overflow automation for loudness compliance.